So uh, now this is the this is actually the essay two paper, right, from Patreon. So um, the students in Patreon actually did this paper while you did yours, of course, right. Let's see how you can do, right, for this one, right. Don't worry, it's not a test. We just want to go through. We are going through together. So uh, why am I going through all this? Because we want to do as many as possible. The best way for you to to score in science is that let's say imagine this is PSLE, and then you look at this. Uh, can you tell me roughly? What type of question this is about? Magnets. Magnets. Yeah. So we have like iron coil, right? This is like magnet, iron disc, electromagnet, right? And then of course the spring, right? And then at the back of my mind, I will have things like this, extension, right? Like this is called extension. You know, when I put one more, you know, what's going to happen? You get an extension. Okay. Straight away, all these things starts to come back to me. Okay, forces and all this stuff. So, uh, let's take a look here. So, this Amelia setup experiment has shown the spring balance showed a reading of one unit. When the iron disc was hung on it and the power supply was switched off. So, when they switch off the power supply, they see one. So, by right, when you switch on the power supply, this thing is supposed to become an electromagnet. And then, it will pull it down, right? So when you switch it off, this thing will go back up. Okay? You understand what's going on? It goes up when you switch off. When you switch on, you'll come down. Okay, so now this is oh sorry. So the reading on the swing balance increased when the power supply was switched on. Why? How come um, when they switch on the power supply, the spring balance value increased? Got any idea why? Uh, yeah, what what attracted what? The rod attracted this. Yeah. So, so you gotta you gotta talk about um this thing the iron rod become when when you, you see uh, we start with when the power supply was switched on. What just happened? So when the power supply was switched on. The power supply was okay. So when you switch on the power supply, what happens to the iron rod? Because it's being caught, the iron rod becomes an pro magnet and attracts the iron disc, which the okay, you see that? So you gotta address the part on um, when it was switched on, right? When it was switched on, you gotta start from when it was switched on. Okay, part B. Okay, so which one created the um, the weakest electromagnet? Which rod created the weakest electromagnet? Okay, so here uh, there's a bit of a uh, let me see A B. So number of calls. 175 Can you, are you able to conclude? You see, by right, uh, when you have more coils, what happens to the reading? It should be longer, right? It should be more But then, okay, let's compare 100 and 100 So this is, A is 5 and then this is 4 Correct? Now, what happens when you halve it? So this one half, C is half the number of coils but is able to attract five that means C is a very strong uh, very powerful electromagnet you understand what I'm saying? okay C is a very powerful electromagnet then how about A? A will be weaker than C right? so C is the strongest um, 
A is weaker than C. How about B? You want to call 75, you get... Okay, so what you can do is you can do a division. You know what I mean by division? That means you divide, you find the same number of coil, and then you see what's the reading on the beam balance. So for example here, if this is 100, okay, let's try to make it 25. Everything changed to 25. Okay, so for every 25 coils, uh, D will attract how many? Okay, this will be 1, right? Because if you take 25, this one divided by 4, I want to make it all 25, right? So divided by 4, 100 divided by 4 get 25, so 4 divided by 4 becomes 1. Now 50 divided by 4, oh sorry, 50 divided by 2, so 5 divided by 2, so this is 2.5. Okay, then about this one? Divide by 3, so this is 1, and this is 100, you're going to divide by 4, so this is 1.25. Right, so for every 25 coils, uh, it will pull how much? You see, so we know that C is the strongest. Okay, so are you able to tell the weakest? In this case, cannot, right? Because both B and D, B and D are the same. So based on, can you conclude which rock created the weakest electromagnet? Cannot, right? So no. Why? Why can't we tell? Because there's a patch of white sticking on the thing and we cannot read. <laughs> no, okay, why can't we tell? Different number of cars. Yeah, there are different number of coils around the different types. Rods. What should he have done? She, Amelia, should standardize the number of chords. Right? Okay, the number of chords should be standardized. No need for the experiment. Okay, you should, you should keep the number of calls the same. Okay, next one. So which material PQ is more suitable to be used as an electromagnet? Let me check. Okay. okay, which material PQ is more suitable to be used as an electromagnet? Uh, the power supply was switched off, so the table below shows the readings for P and Q after the power supply was switched off. So once you switch off the power supply, so the number of coils is the same. Uh, here it shows 1. Now, uh, what does it mean by 1? One? 1 means that it spring back. Correct? 3 means that it never spring back. You understand what I'm saying? So which one is a better electromagnet? Is it the one that spring back or the one that never spring back? Spring back. Ah, very good, right? So P. Why? Because when the power supply was switched 
of the cutoff. The electromagnetism was cut off. As shown in the table where the reading of the screen is one. Okay, so we want it to we want it to cut off. Do you want it to do you want it to still be an electromagnet the one right? You want it to be off. Okay? Is that right? So next page. Okay, candle. So why did the candle flame go up? No carbon dioxide. What did you say? No carbon dioxide. No carbon dioxide? Why does the candle need carbon dioxide? Mm -hmm. eh? Did you say carbon dioxide? No, when burning, what do they use up? Oxygen. Ah, correct, right? It's about oxygen, right? So, uh, the oxygen was used up. Hence, the flame went up. Okay, so now they, uh, she used different sizes. For example, the lead candle, she measured the amount of time taken. And record the results in the table shown. What conclusion can you make from her results? So, the bigger the glass jar, the longer time it took, right? So the conclusion is that um, the bigger. Okay, the observation is that the bigger the glass jar, the longer is flame. So, the what what we want to conclude is that the bigger the glass jar the more oxygen there is right okay so we can conclude like that so suggest how NG can make her results more reliable this is a very standard question how to make the results more reliable okay. yes repeat the experiment a few more times. You see, you did this even without looking at the question. Because it's standard, right? Used to it. Next. Okay, so at the beginning, an island had high populations of plant M and P. Plant M had seeds. Seeds with hooks. P was covered with fur. Uh, same about it for M. Yeah. Why do seeds need to be dispersed like that to prevent overcrowding yeah prevent overcrowding so we gotta explain a bit more about overcrowding prevent overcrowding so the young does not have to compete with the parents for food nutrients sunlight Okay, so you just want to explain a bit more. So roads began to be built. Uh, the, 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 over the next few years, scientists observed that the number of young plants decreased when the roads increased. Why? You cannot like, grow and then grow. Okay, look at this. Huh? Distance moved by animal pee decreased when the roads increased. What does this tell us? This one. Okay, that's bad. Distance moved by NLP actually decreased, right? This thing. Right? The distance moved by NLP uh, decreased. So it means that the plant can plant and be dispersed. Yeah, so the distance moved. 
So when the road increase in length, the move by three degrees. Hence, the seats are dispersed nearer parent. Right, so this reduces. Number of healthy plants. There's overcrowding exists. Okay. Right? Overcrowding. Understand? There's overcrowding happening. Next one. Alright, so a full web in a certain community, Y is a tree. State two benefits that tree Y can provide for X. Yeah. That's fast. Food and shelter. Next one. Okay, this is so standard. Right? So a disease wiped out the whole population. How this will affect the population of B? So the whole Z is gone. How does it affect B? It will decrease. Yeah, V will decrease. Why? W cannot eat Z anymore. Hence, he will eat more V. Right? Does it make sense? Yeah. Easy or so far? Quite okay. Eh? Is your school more difficult? Same one. Okay, next one. Okay, so suggest one advantage for the young and the adult to live in different surroundings. Uh, it's so simple. Same stuff. Right? Different surroundings, so. They will not compete for it. Right? So they don't compete. Or, uh, I'll give you another one. Predators. Predators. You can, you can, it's up to you, right? You can write, write the other one. So predators will either eat the young or the dark, but not both. Hence, ensuring survival. Right, so the, 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 the same kind will survive. Okay, next. Why is it an advantage for X to look like Y? It doesn't... Predators will avoid it. X does not sting. However, predators will avoid Y sting. Yeah, so the predators will avoid. X. Based on graph, one, describe how the amount of carbon dioxide in X changed. Um, what does graph one tell you? Increase, uh, right? How the amount of carbon dioxide change? Carbon dioxide increase. Yep. The amount. Please. Based on the data, given data, explain how the increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Okay. What does the carbon dioxide do? Hmm.
right? So the temperature increase because of global warming. Global warming. Right? Because they are asking how come it leads to global warming? It's because the temperature goes up. Right? So you gotta complete by saying that temperature increases. Um, you understand global warming, right? Yeah. So far, okay, yeah, this paper. Okay, so we have a measure the high H of liquid M. Right, so, so, so. What can he conclude about the property of liquid M and air? Okay, so this piston remained the same. This one decreased. How come this one can decrease? But this one for water, liquid M, it remains the same. Uh, what this shows is that the liquid cannot be compressed, but the air can be compressed. Okay, so we will say, uh, what's the property of liquid M? Liquid M cannot be compressed. Then how about air? Very straightforward. So far, okay. Uh. Three legs. Okay, so state two properties of liquid air that allow the brake system to work. So, first, um, it cannot be compressed. Okay, as mentioned. Okay, what else? One is it cannot be compressed. Then how about the volume? Does it change? Right, so the volume is fixed. Oh, liquid and it's fixed. Right? So if there are air bubbles trapped, the brake will not work. Why? Gotta try to answer this. How come when there are brake when there are air bubbles inside, it's not gonna work? Remember from the experiment here? Yeah, very good, right? So if there are bubbles, the liquid is compressible and the brake will Piston B. Efficiently. Right? Okay, so can you imagine it can be compressed here? Compressed or not? So when the person press this, right, can this move? It cannot really start there, right? So it cannot be like that. So we are going on really fast, right? It's good. So what's the matter is the white mist. After swimming for a while, the inner lens uh, were covered with white mist. You cannot see the water clearly. The white mist. Is it solid liquid or gas? Yeah, liquid. Oh, this one. <laughs> what is this? Favorite, right? Yeah, okay. But can you word it? Can you type? You type it, type it. Let me see. Do the typing. Let's see if you get it right. Oh, you want to do the right thing up to you. Type all right.
Okay, let me take a look. Let's see, right? So the water vapor touched the clear surface of the goggle. Googles, uh, goggles, uh. <laughs> goggles, loses heat and condenses into water droplets. Very good. Right now, Google, right? Uh, it's Google. Okay, very common typo. Right? Okay, that's right. Keywords all there. Okay, next. What is the relationship between the temperature of the water in the pool and the time taken for the goggles to become misty? The colder it is, the faster it takes, right? The colder the temperature of water, the faster it takes. The goggles will become misty. Next one. Why is less likely for goggles to become misty when you hit the pool? You know this up. Uh, why? Condensation? Can it happen? Yeah. Very good. So, so we say the temperature, the goggle. Okay, of the temperature inside the goggle. And outside. Same hands, no condensation can occur. Okay? No condensation. Right? As long as the temperature is the same, uh, you're not going to get any condensation. You see, we are breezing through all this, right? That it should be like this. All right. <coughs> what? Which one showed the most amount of cushion? Which one did you use? So what could object X be? Magnet. Hmm? No. Magnet. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so object X Okay, why? Attracted the weight downwards, overcoming the friction. Okay, using the same type of iron weights and without lifting the box, suggest one way to move the same box across each surface. Using less iron weights than the number of weights in the product. How to, how to make it move faster? Use more eggs. Mm -hmm. um, using the same type of iron weights without lifting the box. So just one way to move the same box. Okay, what's the most frequently used thing to reduce friction? Oil, yeah, so you can lubricate the surface, right? So we gotta explain 
Why? Yeah, so lubrication, lubricants, like oil will reduce friction. Okay? Reduce friction. This one. Wow. Okay, energy conversion. We're moving. Okay, so kinetic ah, first one is K, K E, kinetic. This one, kinetic. kinetic. This one, okay. Okay, when the tide rises, the air in the air chamber will move towards the air turbine, which will turn the generator. Okay, let me explain that. When the tide rises, the air chamber, the air inside the air chamber will rise and turn the air turbine, which will in turn generate electricity, right? So the air goes up. Uh, do, 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 do you understand what it means? This thing goes up, no? So the air will be compressed and it has to force to move out of the turbine. So more electricity is generated when the tide rises faster. How come? Hmm? So when the tide rises, The turbine moves, turns faster. So why is it longer? So the material expand more. The material expands more. And uh, in heat, when heated, hence it is longer. Okay? It's about expanding more. Expands more, right? Next one. Okay. When the street was heated by fire, the ring bell, why? Okay. Okay, so this is what we call a bimetallic strip, right? So when it's being heated, the it will bend. Contact Y will bend towards contact X. Okay, so when heated, it's creating a closed circuit.
what we're doing like super fast. Have you taken a roller coaster before? Which one? Yeah. Hmm? Sanosa. Overseas? Um, we just to Japan. Japan? Yeah. I've like 11, 12 times. Huh? So many times? You're not scared? Huh? Wow. Okay, explain why the fire alarm will not work if metals with low melting points are used. Are you serious? If you use low melting point, what happens? Huh? It will melt. Yeah. So if metals with low melting points are used, it will melt. Okay, fire comes and the whole thing melts. That's the end. Jack made an electrical system for a school project. The second is shown. X and Y mail. The motor turns the fan blade. Wow, this is so complicated. Uh, switch on the thing, electromagnet. When the switch is turned on, the motor turns the fan blade. Okay. How this happens? Okay, so let's take a look, right? So when they turn on the switch here, switch on this thing, right? Uh, this rod X becomes an electromagnet. After it becomes an electromagnet, it will attract What does it attract? Hmm. The rock one. No, you will attract the metal. Yeah. Right? So the metal, this thing, you move this way. Move this way. So when it moves this way, create a closed circuit. After you get a closed circuit, the motor will work, right? Okay, so we will say that when the switch Okay, so if you replace one with a gold colored rod, is it gonna work? Yes. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, so. Okay, so gold, so rod. Okay, so the gold one will not be attracted, hence there is no gold circuit, right? No closed circuit, or rather we just said hence open circuit, just say there is a open circuit.
Okay, hence it doesn't work. All right. Yeah, that's the end. We can.